Hi, welcome along, Richie here from the Heresy Group. So today's video is going to be a review on the Combat Holdall slash Rucksack uh, from a new company here in the UK called Crib Goch. I hope I've said that right. Now this is the Rogue Ridgeback 55. The clue is in the title, it is a 55 litre pack. Now this was kindly sent to us by the uh, the great guys over at Defcon Airsoft, so thank you very much. Really enjoyed getting my hands on this product, around it, seeing what it's all about, and it's uh, ins and outs, bells and whistles, etc. So this pack was designed and developed right here in the UK, really to sort of withstand any extremities the world has to throw at it, you know, wherever it may be deployed. Now, I've nicknamed this thing the tank. It looks a bit like a tank. It's built like a tank. Um, when the guys obviously designed this, they really did not want this thing to break. So I did a bit of digging, a bit of research into the specs for this and, you know, whether it's the breaking strain on the material, the bar tacks, the stitching, the webbing, uh, even down to the, 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 you know, how the thread may rot out. It seems as if, you know, the British standard for what should be acceptable is here. The guys have sort of trebled that, you know, they really do not want this thing um, failing under any circumstances, which is awesome. So just reading up a bit about how they tested this, uh, you know, to its limits, to its, to its extremities. Um, one way they tested this was to put 35 kilos of equipment inside the pack and uh, drop it from over 100 foot from a helicopter doing a roughly uh, 120 knots. Now, that is both hilarious and awesome. It just goes to show, you know, the testament of just how bulletproof these things are. OK, guys, without further ado, let's uh, crack on. Let's get inside this bag and I'll show you some of the key features. So just starting on this side, nice big open top pouch there with a cord, drawstring cord, nail gear bottle, water bottle, etc. Coming along, <clears throat> medium sized pouch. This is quite nice. I like the um, the full size zips on these, which means you know you can drop that right down for full access. Now what I do like about these zips, nice big wide zips there, a nice long paracord pull tab and the pull tab on the end is hefty it's big it's solid you're not going to mistake that in the dark even with gloves on which is nice further down the pack obviously you have a slightly smaller uh, narrower pouch still the same uh, depth sorry height but uh, yeah just slightly narrower again full size zip allows you to drop that all the way down what I do like about these is you have this little mesh pocket with elasticated top here. This just allows just for uh, you know to you know compartmentalize stuff. You know, so you can have stuff both sides of the pouch. Um, just to give you uh, a size reference, um, I managed to fit a spot and scope in this one quite nicely, nice and snug. There is still room for other stuff, heaps of room in there on the front side of that mesh. So you know you can double down on that if you need to. So as we spin it round here, just on one end, nice big grab handle there. Now what I like about this is it's a it's an almost soft rubberized handle. It's not plastic, so when you grab it, it's quite tactile. You can you, there's a lot of grip there, um, and obviously not being plastic, it's not subject to being brittle or breaking, which is nice. When I say it's rubberized, not got a lot of places. It's flexible, but not too flexible, if that makes sense. Just up from that, we have the um, clasp for the over-the-shoulder um, strap. Always an option. So again, some nice heavy stitching along here behind all of this. Yeah, that bar tack stitching is solid. So as you come down, zip here for your end compartment. Now this is a full width pocket, so this will run the full width of the bag here, just to give you an idea of what sort of size you can fit in there. Um, again, with the zips, nice long paracord and hefty pull tabs, as you will have on the other zips. Only difference with this, this is a lockable zip compartment, so you have the holes on the zips to be able to put a, a small personal padlock through, which is nice. Um, as we come down, ID holder, always handy, um, entrance from one side, these are good, especially for the lads that are on deployment, etc. Now, one of the nice features I noticed on this, you have this section here which is expandable, 
Now, I've seen a lot of holders, a lot of bags, when they, when your main compartment is full up, so this end, so when your main compartment is full up, your end pocket becomes much narrower. You lose that, uh, that space in there. Whereas this, you can still have your main compartment full. You can stuff this full here, and these little bits that fold out will just expand out to allow you to just bring that out further to be able to put more kit and more stuff in there. So it's just more um, more capacity, you know. So by filling your main compartment, you don't you don't end up losing this side pocket. It doesn't become redundant, which is nice. So as we come down here, we have our two buckles. Now this is part of our six-way retention system for the top of the bag. Um, these do also serve another purpose, but I'll get to that a bit later on. Um, slightly different design to what I'm used to. Again, nice sturdy buckle on the end there. Elastic to take up any any slack <coughs> to keep all the straps compressed together. But instead of normally having the excess strap here um, velcroed around, you normally roll the excess up, you roll it up and then wrap it around itself, around the main strap, main piece of webbing. This has a little sliding buckle. So it does mean you can slide this all the way out just on that little sliding buckle there to fully extend it. And again, just by grabbing that buckle straight in, you can pull this all the way down to its minimum length. <clears throat> Instead of having this great big clump of webbing, etc., around here that's about sort of, you know, inch by inch square, instead you've just created yourself another pull handle, which is great. And you've got two of these either end. So that'll be one, two. So again, another two pull points, retention points, whatever you'd like to use them for. But yeah, I quite like that. It's a new idea on me. I'm uh, very impressed with that. So I'll just flip the bag 180. And as you can see, very similar setup. Nice big grab handle. Again, your over the shoulder strap buckle and two you know, lid retention buckles. Only thing obviously you don't have on this side, there are no zippers, no compartments on this end. Um, there is a reason for that because basically this will become the bottom of the bag, which I'll explain in a minute. Okay, so what I've done is I've just upended the bag, flipped it on its side, just so you guys can see what is the top section of the bag and we'll run through some of these features. Being obviously being a combat hold all, you do have your main carry straps here nice big wide webbing with a center, vel center velcro clasp there just to keep it all together in one piece. Obviously the lid here underneath I have your main zip that runs around here. As I said before same zips nice long pull tab these are also lockable so if you need to lock the main compartment you can do as well as well as the end pocket we'll get to a bit more inside in just a moment but i want to show you this uh, main lid retention system so you have one zip one main full size zip that runs around the whole section there so once you've done that once you've closed your lid we get onto the retention system so here you have your webbing this way and along. Now the idea behind this is you can really pack this to the brim. Uh, do your zip up and then these straps that I showed you earlier on, these ones clip in what would technically be the top of the bag here and here. Same other end um, and obviously coming widthways. Again you have these nice Nice big buckles, nice wide webbing. Uh, the same system as what is on the end. You have this uh, adjustable buckle here, which just allows you to pull this, you know, take up the slack or open it right out if this thing is fully loaded. So again, this just clips into here, into the lid. And once your pack is full, your zip's done up, you know, you really wrench down these, tighten these down, on all uh, 
all six corners, and that way, you know, you, re you relieve any stress on the zip, um, and it keeps the thing quite compact as well. Acts as a bit of a, like a compression strap. So the six-way tension system here, it's not just about keeping load off the main compartment zip. And I've banged on about it, but that's not its primary uh, purpose. It really is about keeping this as a solid, compact housing for the material that's inside. So if you, you know, this needs to be thrown out of a helicopter, delivered by boat, by truck, whichever, you know, you can ratchet these down and know that everything inside is going to be safe and not rattling around. Also, it assists when you are looking at a logistics point of view. So these crampon tabs here, you can see across the top, these run both sides of the bag here and some on either end. Again, this also helps with transportation of this, uh, this bag. Whether that's whether you wish to attach this to another bag and add to them and make it almost like a palletizable unit, you know, and stack them up, or whether it's just that whether you use them as just tie down points in a vehicle, boat, etc., wherever they need to be going. You can tie this down and know it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, these things really are solid. Okay, so as we lift the lid up on this, two large zip compartments in here. One will see slightly smaller. Again, this just folds down. I've just put some items in here just for more of a size reference than anything else. Um, Velcro attachment, elastic pull tab. You know, so that obviously compass in there. Pins across the top. You know, again, you can fit things like mobile phone, strobes, whatever you like in these pockets. These are the same size, so you have one the same size either end. Obviously, pen pockets in the middle. But again, that is still a deep enough pocket that you can fit items, books, paperwork, etc. in there. So, just coming back from that, behind this, you have another zip in the lid here, behind it. And again, this is a full-size zip, so this pocket actually covers the full section of the lid, whereas this one is just slightly smaller. This back zip covers the whole size of the uh, of the lid as such. So in here, again, maps, tablets, whatever you need, you can fit in there. So as we, as we delve inside the main compartment of the bag, uh, as you can see here, you've got a nice wide, almost like Y yoke here in the bottom with a quick release buckle. So you can put maybe uh, clothes etc in the bottom with that webbing just strap that down you know your clothes etc will stay at the bottom I'm not going to rattle around pockets wise internally there are four main pockets uh, four sorry four zipped pockets two on one side two on the other now these pockets are basically the same height as the bag the sa uh, yeah same height as the bag same width as the bag but divided in two so just in here so we have one zip here again nice and deep nice and wide uh, these are these are not lockable internally but you've got an internally uh, a lockable zip on the outside so no reason for that again another one here same zipper and then again the same on the bottom side here one zip compartment here and one here um, I have got a set of whatever these are, safety glasses in here, in this pocket, just a sort of a size comparison. That does go in one of those four pockets with ease and a bag of room to spare. So you can see it just at the bottom there. So I've just spun the bag up. Obviously we've done the two pockets here. One, two, three, four. Four zippered pockets on either side. Um, on each end of the bag, there is a half pocket, open top, unzipped, with a bungee retention on the top here. Again, this is about half the half the height of the bag itself. So, you know, for me personally, that fit a set of contacts in there quite nicely. So just before we get to the uh, last feature of this bag, um, let's go through the boring bit, which is the part that no one sees, the bottom of the bag. 
but again it's the attention to detail that i like so this is a nice uh, sturdy waterproof lining on here with four large solid metal studs uh, stands on the bottom these are quite nice because these are quite a large surface area normally on the bottom you get those tiny little stands which just wear, which allow wear on the edge of the bags as you put it down but these are quite wide which is nice also this waterproof canvas material you can see there it just comes up the first section of the bag and that that goes right around the bag so you know if you're going to put this in any sort of gopping sort of puddle or sort of mud etc you know you're not going to get this it's just wiped clean you know you're not going to have to sit and scrub this so this is where for me we get to the best feature of this bag um obviously we've done one side with the pockets on the rear here on the opposite side we have this rather large pocket here with a webbing strap now for me it took me a little while to get my head around and understand why on earth the zip would open the bottom way and not across the top but uh we got there in the end you can teach old dogs new tricks so again same system of retention buckles here just unclip those same sort of heavy duty zippers paracord and pull tabs just undo that all the way around So this then folds out, and this allows you to turn the holder into a backpack. So that just basically now folds over on top of the pack. And I'll run through how we're going to set this up just now. So the straps you just undone to open that pocket. These then become a, uh, a compression strap, so if you need to compress the bag right down you can just do these all the way up and this will compress the bag down that being said you can fit a roll mat or whatever you need to do down the side here just becomes you know another attachment point that you can put through here so the two buckles here you have which is part of your six-way retention system for your lid you undo those there and there and again, I say your backpack section folds over. And here you have the matching female buckle to that. So the one you've just removed from your lid, from the, uh, the top lid here of your bag, connects here. And connect here. Now I would say, obviously ratchet these right down, because this is going to hold this uh, backpack section to the main pack itself. And again... On the backpack section you have two female buckles here these attach to what was your part of your six-way retention system again they just ratchet down And likewise for the straps that is the bottom of the bag just clip this into your bottom section of the pack so you basically you're clipping what is the two bottom retention straps for your six-way retention into the bottom of the backpack section so what you're now left with your main backpack section here is attached to your pack by two buckles at the top, two big buckles at the side, two at the bottom. And obviously the only thing you're left to connect are your shoulder straps themselves. So on the corner of this, of the top of the bag, have a D loop here, and the hook for that just clips in there. Same on the other side, there and there, and that is that now attached fully. So let's take a look at this setup as a backpack. Now obviously I showed you the shoulder, hand, shoulder straps here, nice thick pad in there, 
all the way to the top. Same on the other side. Again, you have your vertical pontoons here to help with back support and to stop this, you know, rubbing and rubbing against your spine. That will just allow your spine to sit, you know, dead in the middle there and hopefully avoid any wear and tear. Coming down, you have a uh, fully adjustable waist strap here. Quick release buckle in the middle. But again, the same sort of system as you had on the other, other ones. This just ratchets down how big or how loose you want it around your waist. I would say that in order for this to function properly as a, uh, as a backpack, the six the buckles that you use for your six-way retention system, so two, two, and two, get them strapped, ratcheted right down. That will keep this section as close to your bag as possible. But uh, other than that, I've tried this on <laughs> with some weight in it, and it doesn't, it doesn't move at all. It's uh, quite nice, and the pad in here is super, super comfy as well. Also coming down, um, just while I'm here, regarding the straps, the over-the-shoulder straps for the backpack style, some nice webbing here with stitching in between. This allows obviously for strain relief on this as you get weight on there. Attachment of other items, uh, garments, watches, etc. Some more D loops here, uh, plastic D loops, should you wish to attach stuff. Uh, adjustable chest strap across the front here as well, just to allow you to clip that in, ratchet it in, stop these coming off, off your shoulders. So that just about wraps up the main features uh, on the Reachback Rogue 55 from Crib Gok. Now this is available from the guys over at Defcon Airsoft. It does retail around about 299. Yes, it's not the cheapest uh, pack in the world, but that being said, you know, looking at how this thing is built, looking at the testing and the um, the standards that this thing is set to, um, I do honestly believe the guys pride themselves in this thing never ever failing. You know. Um, I think you'd have to do something absolutely ridiculous with this to uh, break anything on this pack. So guys, any questions, any comments, please leave them in the box below. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this pack. Obviously, please hit like, subscribe, that'd be awesome. Um, other than that, till next time, see you soon.